Welcome you back to part two in what has now become my math DVD series. I put together part one, the water math DVD you've been looking for, because there was a pressing need for a simple, easy way to learn the math that's required for the state water certification exams. When I was coming up through the process learning this, I had a very, very difficult time learning the math. And it, there was really no simple, easy way to do that. I was helping people work nonstop going over the math as they were coming up later, and I thought, you know, I took the time and I learned this in a very easy format. I should actually put something together to help other people learn it in the same way. So that's what I did. And in that purpose, that first DVD was very, very effective. It was able to teach people very easily. I'm talking about people that know nothing about math or algebra, much less water math. And we were able to take people who knew nothing about it and give them a very good, solid foundation that they could go to the exams feeling comfortable with. Well, I put together part two for a couple of reasons. One, I had multiple requests from people that had completed that first DVD. Uh, like I said, that first DVD was a very effective class. And for those people who have mastered that first DVD and wanted to learn more, well, there was a pressing need for me to put this DVD together as well. The other reason I felt the need to put this DVD together is because I want my site, thewaterseafood.com, to be a one-stop place that you can go to to prepare for your exam. And in the purposes of doing that, for the need of putting that site together so that you can come there and have absolutely everything you need, from a math standpoint, I needed to put this DVD together. I wanted to take some of the subjects that we covered in that first DVD and take them to the next level. However, like, uh, like the flow problems that were in the first DVD, there are many variations of those problems. Okay, I wanted to take that to the next level. The dosage problems we covered in the DVD, there are more complex problems that will be thrown at you down the line, and I wanted to take those to the next level. I also wanted to round off all the little things that you might see thrown at you on the exam that I didn't have the time to cover in that first DVD. And for people that are studying just the distribution end, there are certain things like horsepower, cost of pumping, uh, pressure problems that I wanted to cover in this DVD. So that's what we do in this DVD. We take that stuff in the first DVD to the next level and we kind of give you a, a well-rounded, all-encompassing uh, manual for the other things that you'll see. And so I'm very confident that between the first DVD and this DVD, you'll be able to go into that exam and pretty much not have any surprises thrown at you at all. And you'll be comfortable with all the math that you're going to see on those exams. Like the first DVD, this is a classroom style format. I found that that idea of having the booklet in the first DVD to go along with working the problems on the board was very, very effective. And so, like I said, we're doing that again in this one. So there's a booklet that goes along this with this one. Go ahead and get it out as we go through this class. Open it up, go through the problems. If there's a spot that you're kind of stuck, stop the DVD, rewind it, go over that, understand it before moving on. So let's go ahead and hop into the class. Get that booklet out. Let's head into the classroom and I'll see you there. Hi, welcome back into the classroom. The first thing I want to do is hop right into variations on that pipe flow formula that we've worked on before. This is the pipe flow formula, and it might seem familiar to you, but a lot of times you'll see questions take this exact formula and twist it around in many ways it can seem very confusing to you by asking you how to solve for the velocity, how to solve for the diameter, and presenting it in different ways. So I want to get you comfortable with that. Take that formula to the next level. Before we do that, I want to start my review of that formula. The next question. A 440 gallon per minute pump pumps water to the distribution system through a six inch pipe. What is the water velocity in feet per second. So now what they're asking us 
is what is the water velocity in feet per second? I circle it and I gotta erase it. This next one throws a curveball at you because it's kind of a two-step process. But you will see this. I've seen this problem on the math portion of exams. I've also seen it on the multiple choice, and I'll show you at the end of the problem how you might see this in the multiple choice. A 12-inch water main is reduced to a 6-inch water main. If the velocity in the 12-inch main is 1.25 feet per second, what is the velocity in the 6-inch main? Again, so we got a 12-inch main, we're reducing that main down to a 6-inch main. The velocity in the larger main, the 12-inch main, is 1.25 feet per second. They want to know what is the velocity in the 6-inch main. Let's put both these equations down. They want to know what is the velocity in the 6-inch main. So let's start with that one. Hi, welcome back. What I want to do now in the next part is take the dosage problems that we worked on in the last DVD and take those problems to the next level because you, see, you will see more complex versions of those problems thrown at you. Primarily when we did those dosage problems we were solving for how many pounds, like how many pounds of a given substance. But you're not always asked how many straight up pounds of a given substance. You're often asked how many pounds of a percent solution. And you're often asked how many gallons of a percent solution as you get up into the higher levels of the math. So that's what I want to go ahead and work on in this next segment. Before I hop right into that, I want to cover two subjects, specific gravity and density. Specific gravity and density. And just start by going over the definitions first and then work some very simple math problems with those. Density. Please don't spell it wrong time. <laughs> density is going to equal the weight of a gallon or a given measurement. If you're in Europe, it's in liters or whatever, but we're here in the United States. So we're going with gallons. Density is going to equal the weight of a gallon of a given substance. So density is the weight of a gallon of a given substance in its simplest terms. The specific gravity is going to equal the weight of a gallon of a given substance in relation to one gallon of water. Okay, So density is the weight of a gallon Specific gravity is the weight in relation to water. So let's solve this next problem and then it'll start to make some sense. Next question. A flow of 700,000 gallons per day requires a dose of 25 parts per million of chlorine. If you are using 12.5% sodium hypochlorite, how many pounds per day of solution are needed? Step one, determine the pounds. So, let's build our little bracket here, make our little man for the dose of fire. I don't always do that circle, I always do this, but I don't ever, there's no need to put that circle in every time once you understand it. This next problem is basically this exact problem that is taking it to the next level. It's the same problem. A flow of 700,000 gallons per day requires a dose of 25 parts per million chlorine. If you're using 12.5% sodium hypochlorite, how many gallons of solution are needed? Instead of how many pounds of your solution, how many gallons of that solution? So you would solve the same way Remember, you take that 700,000, convert it to million gallons, 0 0.7, times 8.34, times 25, you get 145.95 pounds of chlorine. Now you divide by the percent solution to tell you how many pounds of solution. 145.95 divided by 12.5%, and you're going to get 1167.6 pounds of solution. Now, step three, how many gallons? you're going to divide 1167.6 divided by the weight. It doesn't tell you the exact weight of the solution here, 
And I left that out on this problem specifically to show that to you because oftentimes that's what you will get. If you don't get an exact weight of that solution that's not water, then use the weight of water. For example, in this question that asks you how many gallons of the solution are needed, you're going to take 1167, 1167.6, that's pounds of solution, divide by the weight of water if you're not given anything else. If you are given a specific weight, use that one. If not, use the weight of water, and that will tell you how many gallons. 140 gallons of solution. So that's how many pounds of that solution. Divide by the weight, that's the weight per gallon, to get how many gallons of that solution. And the answer, if that previous problem was asking you how many gallons instead of how many pounds, would be 140 gallons of that solution. Let's do another problem. One horsepower equals 33,000 foot-pounds per minute. It also equals 746 watts. The watts ties in more when you're dealing with the cost of pumping. Obviously, this deals in when you're dealing with the pumping power. I want to go over a couple of definitions as well before we go ahead and hop right into the problem, things that you will see that I want you to understand. We don't need to jump too much into, into horsepower going crazy, but just so you understand a little bit of what you're doing, and the history is kind of a little bit interesting, but understand the history will help you understand the problems a little bit. First off, horsepower itself is just the ability to do work at a given rate. We're going to keep it real simple. And work, when you're dealing with physics, is basically when a force moves an object. Okay, so when a force moves an object, they kind of call that work. And that is calculated by taking that force multiplied by its displacement. Horsepower was actually invented in James, by James Watt. And he invented it as a way of comparing the power of a horse back in the old days to the power of a steam engine when the steam engine was new. So that's how old school this goes back. And basically they were using the horses and he wanted to compare that so you could see the ratio of the effectiveness of them. In order to do that, he needed to determine the power of a horse. And the way he did that was basically by hooking up a pulley type thing. I'm going to leave this here, so I'm going to write over here. But basically, he had like a pulley type deal with a sack of coal on it like this. And that pulley went over something, and it was tied into an actual horse. And he wanted to see what weight and how much that horse could displace in a minute. And through his testing, he decided that a horse can move 330 pounds, 330 pounds, 100 feet vertically in a minute. So obviously, it's a, a little more testing than just that, but that was the gist of it. So he took that 330 pounds and 100 feet. And remember, I was saying the work is calculated by force times its displacement. And so 330 pounds times 100 feet gave him 333,000 foot-pounds per minute. So that's what he used as a basis of horsepower, and from way back in the days of steam engines, that number has struck, struck, has stuck. So that's what we still use today.